All right, by request, let's look at the Zentradi male power armor. Hello, everybody. My name is Preston Poulter. Welcome to Lords of Iron. So, the male power armor in Japanese is the Nugaderu. Yeah. That last part is the sound of the pilot dying, which they do a lot. My only exposure, again, I haven't watched the additional Macross releases because, well, they haven't been made available yet. But, in... The Macross slash Robotech first part series there. All you ever see this armor do is lose its failure armor. It just kind of flies around and then gets blown up. It's like a battle pod, but according to the lore, somehow worse. I mean, really, I'm trying to envision that. I'm trying to envision the guy climbing into the battle pod, getting into his little fetal position and going, well, <laughs> at least I'm not that guy, right? Of course, the main function of this stuff is selling toys to kids. So this leads to just a lot of stuff that you don't really need. Like, it, this male power armor doesn't really have much of a function. And something I think is a bit psychological, the female power armor we see Miria flying, that's some bad stuff. You know, she's got that whole showdown with Maximilian Sterling and Macross City, and wow, that, that armor looks cool. It fires out a whole bunch of missiles. It's good. What, does the male power armor got missiles? No, it's got... It's got this failure cannon across its back, and then it has this, it has like a really pathetic little handheld thing. It makes you wonder, why does it need three things? Does it need like an energy weapon, an energy weapon, and an energy weapon? Oh, but it's long, medium, and short. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, so, yeah, I, what, what is this for? I don't know. And it's got, really, I think the main function is the impact cannon there on the middle. You can tell a man named that one. I think they just should have done what, it was logical to make it like a codpiece cannon, and then the pilot just fires it with a crotch chop. You know, just boom, and then off it goes. That would have made it stylish. You get to see it briefly there in the last episode where the SDF-1 or in Robotech... SDF-2 has taken a direct hit. We've lost communications. What? It looks pretty bad. The SDF-2. It was always weird, because why did... Carl Maquette and the guys who made Robotech decide, well, we're going to say the SDF-2 is somehow involved in this attack. When we just look at it, that's clearly just the SDF-1. It got hit. For whatever reason, they run to the auxiliary bridge, and now things work for one shot, which kind of misses. Clearly, this was like everybody being a little off their game. And how appropriate that that's where the armor makes its appearance and gets mowed down by Rick Hunter. A lone Veritech fighter appears out of nowhere to confront the Zentradi single-handedly. Anyway, there you go. The Nagaderuja Zentradi male power armor. Clearly inferior to virtually everything else that this failed combat species <laughs> decided to field. My name is Preston Poulter. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Take care.